Hey, what is up guys, it's Arnik and welcome to this video. Today we want to discuss a topic suggestion made by Mike Lissy. Lissy, I hope any of that is correct and sorry for butchering it. So Mike wrote, hey Arnik, I'm glad that you're back. Well, thank you. A topic suggestion from me is multiple shapes in a single layer. How would you tackle this and when would you use it instead of pre-comping separate layers? Also, how can you achieve different looks by sorting all the merges or other properties? Like for example, if a layer has a stroke and this layer is part of a group which also has a stroke, which one has priority? Well, first of all, Mike, thank you very much for your input and as promised, your suggestion is more than welcome. So here is to you, advanced shape layer techniques, ASLT. So today let me show you when you should pursue this method over exploding them into separate shape layers and also when not to. Because when working with shape layers in After Effects there are a multitude of ways to use, utilize and make the most of the properties and settings we have at hand. So let's dive right in there, shall we? Right, so it looks like we actually are right back in After Effects after all. So let's look at the questions at hand. How to do it, what to do with it, and when, as well as when not to, put multiple shapes in one layer. Well, for starters, more often than not, you will run into a situation where you're gonna create some sort of graphic element that consists of a multitude of different shapes and elements that will ultimately stick together at all times as for instance with this smartphone replica. So instead of plastering your whole timeline with all these singular shape layers that need to be parented together anyways, why not just smack them all together in one layer right off the bat? No need to bother with all this parenting and extra keyframing. A clearly structured and clean timeline is essential to an efficient and fast workflow. Trust me on this one, I've been on both sides and can't stress enough how valuable this is. Clear up the shape's messiness some more by grouping what belongs together. Simply highlight the elements and hit Ctrl or Command plus G. Name the group accordingly and you'll never forget what is what and where to find it. This is a great way to keep your layer nice and clean in and of itself. However, grouping comes with its own strange behaviors and whatnot. And here is where we get to the second part of Mike's question. See, both of these shapes have been grouped together and each object has a stroke of their own with specific colors and everything. Now, let's see what happens if we add a dedicated stroke to this group. The stroke of the individual shapes has persisted and the group's stroke has actually been added to both of the shapes. Although you should notice that the group stroke is positioned behind the original stroke and fill. So for these cases, remember, Shape-specific attributes are not affected by group settings, or vice versa. But there is more. We can not only group those shapes together while altering each and every single individual as well as group settings. After Effects also comes with its own version of Illustrator's Shape Builder tool, in the form of Merge Paths. Let's pick it up where we left off. So we have these shapes that are completely independent from each other, right? We can move it and do whatever we want with it. So far so underwhelming. Now let's add a merge path to this group and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like After Effects has added stroke as well as fill settings. And with this you'll notice that this completely overrules whatever settings we had for the shapes originally. Well, that's nice and all, but what's really the point? The true value of merge paths only shows once you make the shapes overlap. Take a close look at the stroke of the shapes when I drag this layer above the other. See what's going on? The two shapes are now acting as though it is one single piece. And it is not just overlapping, but actually merging into one and creating an actual shape in and of itself. See how the stroke only appears on the outermost edges of the combination of both layers. After Effects now considers the combination of those as one single object, whilst maintaining the ability to change each one. Let's add a trim path to make this even clearer. See how this is reacting now? No matter where I put the objects, for After Effects it has now become one single piece. 
So this is a very handy tool to create various shapes that would otherwise take ages to put together in properly with just the path tool. Let's dig a little bit deeper into the merge path options. We can open up a drop down menu to reveal the modes. Initially merge paths will always be set to add. So add will always expand the shapes as far as possible based on the given objects. Switching down to intersect will give us the inverted result, leaving us with only those parts where the given shapes overlap each other. Also, changing up the order of the shapes does not affect the result in any way, neither for add nor for intersect. This is different though if you go on and select subtract. Now After Effects will look at the uppermost shape and leave you with only those bits the shape underneath does not reach. So let's change the order down here to see what difference this actually makes. Keep in mind that you can always come back and change, move around or do whatever with the shapes you are merging. As for the last two merge modes, I can honestly not tell you much. The exclude intersections option I have never even used yet. But if you know about an interesting way to make use of this option, please be so kind and share your insights in the comments down below, because I just can't seem to find a way to use it. Now this has been a whole lot of input for you guys to think about, but you should also know there are certain drawbacks to putting all of the shapes in one single layer. For instance, if you wanted, for whichever reason, to blur the pupil of these eyes, it is simply not possible without blurring the whole rest of the layer with it. Things like these really make it worthwhile to know what you need to do with your elements and shapes before starting with it all. So try to plan as far ahead as possible so you don't have to reorganize, restructure and do just a whole lot of changes halfway in. I hope this video could clear up some of the confusion around how to use and utilize shape layers in After Effects, as well as the merging tabs for that matter. Let me know if you learned anything or have a new suggestion for other topics. If so, drop them in the comments below and I will get back to them. If you want to see more of this face, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really does make a big difference. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!